Warning, All Things Crime is a true crime production that may contain violent or disturbing material. Viewer or listener discretion is advised. The school boards that, uh, and this is kind of, you know, happening out in Virginia where basically they've said that parents don't have the right to, un- to know what's being taught in the classrooms. Are you kidding me? Who are these people to think that they have more authority on what these children are learning than their own parents? I'm sorry. There is no higher authority other than God when it comes to my kids. And don't you dare try to take away any of my parental rights based on you know what I'm going to teach my kids because they are my kids. They're not your kids. They're my kids. And uh, my wife and I, well, I should say they're my wife's kids because if I ever had a choice between me and my wife, they would, well, I'll tell you who right now who they'd choose. But anyway, that's, that's another level of the beast. You know, there it's, uh, it's getting out of control. So back to the beast. Let's talk about uh, a perfect example of a large group of people that uh, essentially reduce themselves and their country and millions of people into chaos and uh, almost to the animalistic level, and that's the Taliban. So if you think of Afghanistan, now, a lot of, you know, we've talked about Afghanistan uh, on other episodes in this podcast, but um, Afghanistan, we don't hear a lot of news coming out of there. Geez, what a surprise that the Taliban is really cutting down on things, you know, the amount of information that's flowing out of there. But it scares me because, number one, there are still American citizens still, and we assume they're still alive, but with the Taliban basically reducing that entire country back to Sharia law. And that's rapidly where it's hitting. There's uh, public executions. There are beatings. There are all sorts of things. And that's just, it's reducing, I mean, take everybody's brain out of their head and reduce it to whoever's uh, physically, uh, whether they, they're the ones that control all the guns or they're the biggest, uh, the biggest guy, you know, the guys can dominate the women. Um, but basically it's, you know, there's, it's the animal kingdom and whatever they believe is the, the proper way, then that's how it's going to go. And to me, it's just, it's just the most animalistic, basic, um, you're taking all the morals, all the, the good that uh, mankind can do and you're reducing it to uh, just this, um, you know, it's pathetic. And well, essentially that is kind of the, the ultimate of the beast, but there's, there's other, there's other um, examples that I'm going to give here in a second, but I want to talk about the last part of evil, the beast and the buffet. So what is the buffet? Essentially, all of us are the buffet. Now, if you if you think about a buffet line, and I think the most famous, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a cafeteria line, but a real buffet, uh, you, you can't get much better buffets than cruise ships. I don't know if you've ever been on a cruise, but holy crap, you can gain 20, 30 pounds in a week right there, I'm telling you. And the cruise, the one cruise that I've been on, I have never ate so much. And all of this food is world-class. Man, this stuff is good. Well, there's a natural order to pretty much every buffet. And, you know, it starts with appetizers and uh, salads, and then it gets into all these main courses, and then usually the desserts are at the very end, and then the drinks and that kind of thing. Well, um, put yourself on that buffet somewhere because... It, and it doesn't really matter. I, I kind of look at different people on the buffet 
the bigger the producer you are, the more appetizing you are and the more filling you are. So the real producers in society are going to be main courses. And, um, uh, you know, who knows who's going to be appetizers and, and uh, desserts. But uh, regardless, we are all on this buffet. And I'll tell you, just because you're at the end of the buffet, and especially some of these politicians that they will establish laws and rules and executive orders and things like that where supposedly they're at the back of the buffet and they they feel a little safer back there you know maybe maybe the plates will be full and yeah you know, they won't be as hungry by the time they get to me but i'm telling you when the beast gets big enough and the beast gets out of control enough it doesn't matter where you are on the buffet you will be consumed so here's a perfect example um in Portland, the mayor, his name's uh, Mayor Wheeler. Now this guy is, uh, <laughs> personally, I think he's an idiot. Um, and but he is the perfect example of a guy that thinks that he's at the he's at the back of the buffet, and so he's safe. Well, he is allowed Antifa. So Antifa is a is a great example of the beast that can grow and grow and grow. It starts small, it starts just kind of probing things, but over time the beast will get big enough that it'll consume everything. And uh, these anarchists, these Antifa types, uh, they have, they've hijacked even the BLM movement, and a lot of them are they are they are the beast because they don't care who's in charge. They don't care uh, who resists them. They're going to fight. And they have their set of beliefs, and it's different than what the rest of us in society believe. And, you know, they're, they're anti any kind of government. They're, like I said, they're anarchists, and they just want to topple everything. I don't think they've really thought that through, you know, who's going to actually provide them food. But, you know, being uh, millennials and, and probably living off of mommy and daddy for their entire lives, they have no comprehension of what it actually takes to put food on the table. So what a surprise, right? Well, amazingly, Mayor Wheeler, who I think just by his inaction, by just allowing Antifa to, you know, uh, bomb cop cars, or not bomb, but uh, firebomb cop cars and, uh, you know, storm buildings and injure people and riot and, and do all this destruction, millions and millions and millions of dollars of destruction. You know, people's entire livelihood destroyed just in a matter of hours. Well, <clears throat> by doing nothing, he has essentially allowed that beast to grow and grow and grow. And even when he, again, he's ignorant enough that he thinks that he's their friend and that they will uh, befriend him when he joins them. So he joins them down on the street and they attack him because some of them, and they actually, uh, where it is a while back, they attacked his apartment as well. Well, holy crap. What are they thinking, right? I'm sure Wheeler was just absolutely astonished by that. He's like, what are you doing attacking me? I'm the one that enabled you to, uh, you know, I held all the cops back and prevented them from upholding the law. Therefore, you, you should respect me. Well, they don't. And the beast never will. So eventually, it doesn't matter how much uh, any particular person tries to remove themselves off of the buffet, they're still there. And uh, this beast has actually started consuming even Wheeler. And I'll bet, I'll bet he doesn't go down on the street very much anymore. So <clears throat> here's another example. Uh, this, pan this COVID pandemic. Tell me that this COVID pandemic is not out of control. We started almost two years ago with two weeks to uh, slow the spread or I, what was it? Two weeks to flatten the curve. That's what it was two weeks to flatten the curve. And the curve was hospitalizations and, and deaths. Well, the, the entire purpose of the two weeks to flatten the curve 
was so that our hospitals wouldn't be overrun because we didn't have enough PPE, uh, we didn't have enough beds, we didn't have enough ventilators. They weren't ready for this. And you know, the, the reason that they weren't ready is a whole nother, um, whole nother issue. But the bottom line is the beast, which is in my opinion, led by Dr. Fauci and other uh, public health officials that it's not that they don't have their best best interest. Fauci, I don't know. I mean, that guy is just so compromised. I, I just can't even quite comprehend him. But, you know, the other public health officials, their biggest problem is they're so myopic that all they care about is, uh, is COVID, you know, and reducing the number of infections. And, and, you know, what has happened from trying to avoid people from getting into hospital stage, which we all know that once you enter the hospital with COVID, the chances of survival drop by about 40%. So yes, that is a worthy goal. However, destroying all of society and destroying the economy and destroying people's livelihoods in order to protect themselves. You know, initially, if you guys remember, um, when COVID first broke out, the word on the street was, if you get this virus, you're a goner. And I think there are actually people, here we are almost two years later, I think there are actually people that still believe that, that if they are infected with COVID, the COVID virus, that they are gonna die no matter what. And being here in San Francisco, this has been a really a, an eye-opening experience where people, uh, even walking outside. So I went on a run this morning and uh, again, over there on uh, Seal Point or whatever it's called. And people were walking around. There's a little breeze going on. They were 20 feet, 30 feet from me and they still had double masks on. And the crazy thing is, I, I you know, those people, I'm not sure what's going through their minds, but Every time I saw somebody that didn't have a mask, they were they would look at me like they were guilty. Like, uh, and that's the thing is they had this fear on their face. And I don't know if it's a fear of, man, I don't know if this guy has COVID or if it's a fear and a guilt of saying, oh my gosh, I got caught without my mask. Well, either way, that is just, there's a level of irrational fear that can only be caused by dictator level like mandates and stuff. And, you know, I'm, I've been vaccinated. I've had COVID. So I know I have antibodies uh, and I'm, I'm so far away from people and I'm outside. There is no rational reason to think that even if I was full of COVID. I mean, short of having a sprayer and spraying out COVID on top of these people, the odds of them getting it have to be one in a trillion. It is insane what the risk level is of somebody that is outside uh, and and walks even remotely close to somebody. It, it's It's got to be so low. It's just ridiculous. Well, but the, the, the fear on their faces, I think, has been caused by uh, what's going on here in California with you know different levels of governments all the way from the governor all the way down. But um, yeah, it's crazy. Well, anyway, uh, you know, COVID's another one. Um, uh, the school boards, you know, the school boards that, uh, and this is kind of, you know, happening out in Virginia where basically they've said that parents don't have the right to, un to know what's being taught in the classrooms. Are you kidding me? Who are these people to think that they have more authority on what these children are learning than their own parents? I'm sorry. There is no higher authority other than God when it comes to my kids. And don't you dare try to take away any of my parental rights based on, you know, what I'm going to teach my kids because they are my kids. They're not your kids. They're my kids. 
And um, my wife and I, well, I should say they were my wife's kids because if I ever had a choice between me and my wife, they would, well, I'll tell you who right now who they'd choose. But anyway, that's, that's another level of the beast. You know, there it's, uh, it's getting out of control. Um, the, the last thing I, the last example that I want to talk about is defunding the police. I don't know how this movement got started. Um, I think it rather than defund the police, maybe it should have been, you know, I mean, you got these extreme examples of, you know, George Floyd being, being murdered, you know, uh, guy kneeling on his neck for, uh, nine minutes, you know, those kind of things. When you think about how many interactions there are between the civilian population and law enforcement, millions every day, and you, and you, there, yeah, there's millions. Well, now you're talking, what's the odds of actually uh, dying by police? If, if you look at all the statistics, and it, let's take the emotion out of this, and let's take the race and all this other talk out of it. If you strictly look at um, the statistical possibility, uh, it is so low that it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. I'll bet you have a better chance of getting of getting killed over a roll of toilet paper during COVID than you do uh, being shot by the police or being killed by the police. And anyway, I, I'd I'd have to do a little more research and comparing on that. But the bottom line is, the people that are talking about defunding the police are not people that are living are are going to have to live on that. Um, with the, the repercussions of that. So they are basically placing themselves at the very back of the buffet, and then they're unleashing the, unleashing the beast on uh, society, and that's by, by reducing the amount. So imagine a buffet. You got a ton of kids, it's all desserts. I mean, it's almost like, uh, you know, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, or what, whatever that, uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, sorry. And, you know, enabling those kids to just go crazy in that factory. Well, you know, they it doesn't matter what kind of rules you tell them. It would be reduced really fast. And that's kind of what's happening. And with all these areas that are defunding the police, you're taking away the adults in the room. And uh, a lot of society is breaking down from it. So, all right, guys. Well, anyway, that's, that's kind of wrapping up the beast in the buffet kind of... Um, and and now you can understand when you have these levels of evil that are being unchecked that it just escalates it it some of it escalates over time but some of it escalates really fast depending on the situation and if we don't have rules if we don't have um and, and some of these rules have to come from a higher authority they can't come from man because man will always have greed and man will always set things so it's to their advantage. And you can see, especially politicians, like, you know, some of these politicians, and it doesn't matter what uh, party they're from, they go to Washington, D.C., they're there for 40, 50 years, and they come out multi, multi-millionaires. How does that happen? You know, you tell me. It, it, but if you just look at the numbers of how much they earn versus how much they're worth, um, doesn't add up. So... That's just a, a, a big example that you can't just trust on men. They ha there has to be a higher authority. And uh, for me, that's if that's not a justification to put God back in the classroom, I don't know what is. So, all right, guys, we will talk at you later.